Hi guys, I thought uh, we'd try something slightly different, so this video needs a little bit of introduction. This is part one of a repair of a Lenovo laptop. I've diagnosed the problem, I think, but I haven't managed to fix it yet. So, basing on a video I made last week in three parts of a graphics card, which we eventually got to the bottom of, there was a lot of interactivity going on. You know, I was sort of making parts of the video. People were suggesting things. I was then doing the things people suggested and making another part of the video. And then the third part, I actually figured out where the problem was. And a lot of people thought it was a good result. And some of you guys were very pleased with yourself for calling it. So I thought we'd do this maybe again. Let's see how it goes. If you like this sort of thing, then we can do it every so often. Okay, so here comes something I think possibly new for YouTube, an interactive repair video. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you all at the end. I have a Lenovo laptop here, um, Intel Core i5, 8th generation, a relatively recent one, um, IdeaPad S145. And it's coming basically with what he said was a power problem, that's all I know have a power problem let's see if it does anything I mean, there's batteries on this one well the battery is actually internal you can't just change that hit the power button so it appears to be completely dead let's connect a power supply so this is my uh, universal it's more than powerful enough to run this so we'll Connect this up and let's have a look to see if it does anything with the power supply on. So power supply is on, green light is on the power supply. And, ah, okay, so the power light is hidden behind there where you can't see it. And of course it stopped, oh no, it started again. So the power light's flashing. And what appears to be a code, does it do a certain number of flashes? Let's count. It's off at the moment. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven flashes. Yeah, seven flashes per cycle. So one would assume that's trying to tell us something. Press the power button, nothing happens. Well, I think the first most sensible thing to do with this is go and Google what that means. Yeah, see if it actually uh, tells us something useful. Okay, so the flashing button, I couldn't find anything about how many flashes, but basically it's in sleep mode it says. So if we hold this in for 15 seconds, yeah, it stopped flashing. Mm. Let's see if it stopped or if it starts again. Just shield a bit of light from it. No, that stopped it flashing. Right, let's press it again. And we're back to flashing again. So that stops it flashing, but it doesn't make it working, basically. <laughs> so it doesn't really do the job exactly. Is it still flashing seven times? Yeah, it looks like it. In that case, then, I'm going to try disconnecting the battery. Just hold this until it stops. Yeah, it stopped flashing. So, time to open another laptop. Oh. So, it's not that... Well, I'm not sure how old it is, actually. Um, it has... 10 screws in it. Let's see if we can find one of these that fits it there. One of these that actually fits it. good fit actually that is very useful these tool tool kits these small ones okay so time to remove the screws well that's the screws out so i'm guessing this is kind of held on with uh, some sort of clips now probably need the spudger to uh, get inside it you know it looks quite tight i think we can come in from this side actually where there's no connectors or anything nearby. Let's have a quick look. I 
I don't think it matters which side we're coming at, to be quite honest. We just need to get in at it one way or another. Let's see what we can do. Well, it's loose at the back. There's a gap there, yeah. So if we start from here, that's probably a good idea. Start near this edge somewhere. Yeah, that got it. That got it, yeah. That got it. So, yep. This one's so far so good, it's coming quite easily. Yeah, which makes me think it's been opened before. Okay, so, quite a simple thing. Memory, processor. The fan's running. Processor fan's actually running. <laughs> the processor fan is actually running. And the light's back to uh, flashing again, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, disconnect the battery. So it looks like it's probably, yeah, it just slides out. Using something a bit better than a fingernail though to do it. I might get that connector out without actually removing the battery, but it might be easier just to lift the battery out actually. One of these looks a little bit crooked there. Okay, so battery is lifted. It's probably come easier now. That's, uh, yeah, out it comes. So that's the battery off. Um, while we're at it, I'll just zoom down. This looks a little bit crooked, and I think we should actually disconnect the CMOS battery as well. It might not be crooked. It just caught my eye. It's not looking quite straight. P possibly this is one of the ones that kind of like lifts up a little bit, flicks up, and then comes off. Yeah, it lifts up. It may actually be that this thing itself isn't quite... Uh, straight up yeah seems to be well to be quite honest it's kind of stuck down as well to the actual pcb so i'll we'll probably leave it and we'll only remove that if we need to now there's no hard drive in this so i don't really know the history of this it came in from a handy andy at the phone repair shop but it says it belongs to a customer Possibly took the hard drive out before it came in for security purposes. Okay. So we've disconnected that. Now let's leave it about five minutes and then see what happens. Well, I left this uh, disconnected while I had my lunch. Now let's see if it actually made any difference. Will it now boot up? I've reconnected the battery. Um... I don't know if you can see it, you probably will if I put a little mark on this actually because it's kind of not easy to see the fan, but if I put something on there, yeah, you see, it's, you see it went, yeah, so what it's doing is basically the orange light is on at the charging port, the white light is flashing on the on off button, and the fan is turning itself on and off, just put something on there, you'll see it takes a few seconds and then yeah, there you see so the fans switching itself on and off every so many seconds this is now has a flashing white light going here as well so let's see if it does the same thing yeah so when the fan spins this flashes several times and goes off what is that little indicator there that is the power indicator Okay, so that's what we have going on, and the uh, power button is also flashing on and off. Let's see if that flashes on and off when I want the side flashes off at the same time. Yeah, it looks like it does. It looks like the one on the side and the one on the button basically do the same thing. Well, I had a quick look on my friend Google, and basically what it says is this. We just uh, go to this is Lenovo's page, so. It's describing black screen won't boot up, won't hook up on monitor. So it tells us here what these lights do, basically. So the battery status, which I'm assuming is the one by the charger plug, is solid amber, which says the battery has between 5% and 20% charged. So there could well be a problem with the battery, or it isn't charged. And then the power indicator blinking says it's in sleep mode so according to this it's in sleep mode and the battery is low so 
seeing as when I removed the battery, I've tried holding this uh, the power button in for 20, 30 seconds without the battery connected. That was another suggestion, but none of them seem to actually get this working. So I will think I'll leave it a while and let's see whether or not it works once the battery's charged up. I've charged it up now, I don't know if you can see very well, but the uh, power light is now white, it took a couple of hours to charge up. The on off light is effectively on now, although the power button itself, it's yeah, flashing, it's on. Sometimes this flashes slowly like yeah, like that, yeah. Let's see what the one at the side does. So this is the yeah, this is flashing as well. This is the power indicator and this is the battery charge indicator, which is white. So that's what it's now doing, it's effectively turning on and off. If I hold the button in, you can probably see the old light on it now. If I hold this in, yeah, I can get it to switch off, okay. Quick touch will switch it back on again. Okay, it's on again. I'm sure you can see the light. And it's back to what it was doing just on the slower cycle now. So the fan is stopped and then it will spin. Yeah, it's spinning now. That will stop again. It has very fine veins, so it might be hard. I'm sure you can see it speed up and slowing down now. So that's what it's doing now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the power. I'll disconnect the battery and I'll measure the resistances on the various inductors I can see on the motherboard. So we'll just uh, disconnect that. So I've disconnected so without actually having to unscrew the battery. Yeah, it's off this time. So it's powered off. We can take the meter on ohms range. Okay. And let's have a look to see on the various inductors. So there's one here. This is reading quite well at 3 ohms. Well, it could be the CPU, the CPU's here. Someone's reading 3 ohms. That's reading 2. That's reading 2. Are these two on the same? Yeah, it looks like those two are on the same phase. And this is on a different one. Small one here. 13. Okay. There's one up here. That one reads practically open circuit. Just make sure I get a good connection on it. Yeah, that's practically open circuit, that one. Uh, it's a little bit unusual in itself. This one's reading into the tens of kilo ohms. Just try this one again, make sure I get a connection on it. Yeah, open. Another one here. Yeah, uh, right mid side there. Yep, connection's this side. Yeah, that one reads into the kilo ohms again, mega ohms even. I think it might be one or two small ones. There's another one over here. We can try this one. 24 ohms. Is that the memory? Let's just take the uh, RAM out. No, it still reads 24 ohms. I'm just wondering which one might be the RAM supply. I'll just read 25 meg now. Um... These are all too low, I think, to read RAM. Let's have a look. Yeah, 3.9, 2.2, 2.2. So I'm not sure which is the RAM supply. Is it this one? Well, it's in the kilo ohms still. You'd expect one of them to read, you know, to the hundreds of ohms maybe when the RAM's inserted and change when you take the RAM out. Possibly something on the other side of the board. Let's have a, another one, a smaller one. 135, that could be RAM. So the RAM out. Yeah, 210. Put the RAM in. 135, yeah. So we assume that's the RAM supply. We'd expect that to be like 1.5 volts, something like that. I'm guessing one of these is probably the PCH or even GPU, which is built into this. And the other two are probably the V-Core. So V-Core, PCH, I'm guessing. There's another one here. What's this one really? 15, yeah. Something in there again. So, 
what we can do is we can reconnect it back up now and measure the voltages on these. Now let's see if we can make any sense about what it's doing. I'll put the uh, CMOS on first. Okay, CMOS and power. Now at the moment I think it should stay off, so we can just measure some voltages. I'm expecting to find a 5 volt and a 3 volt standby somewhere in here. So let's have a quick look. Okay, that has zoomed in a little bit. So let's see if we can find the standby voltages. Let's see, we want the volts range on the meter. We want the meter where we can see it. Yeah. Volts range. Right, let's have a look. So look on these ones with the high resistances first. There's nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. I'm expecting these ones with the low resistances to have nothing on them because I'm expecting this is to be the V core and similar things. I should find some power somewhere in here, a standby power. Yeah, there's anything there. Wrong side of it. Right, let's try this. Well, that's an 8 volt. That's probably the battery because the battery is 7.4 volts. Again, let's have a quick look here. No. No. There was one over here. Let's try this one. No, I'm pretty sure this is the RAM, so be nothing on that one. Well, I can't find the standby voltage, but it does start up. So I'm happy to assume there is a standby voltage somewhere here. Let's start it up and then let's see what we get. Okay, it's now started. The fan's going to do its cycling on and off. Now let's have a look to see what voltages we have. So this was the one which we pretty sure was on the battery. Put the meter where we can see it. There you go. Well, that still has 8.4 on. Yeah, it's just gone to 8.5. So it's just changing a little bit as it's switching on and off. Yeah. This one. Oh, that's a 3.3 .3 volt when it's running. Okay, so we have a 3.3 .3 volt. Is this the 5? Yeah, that's the 5 volt supply. So, okay, they're, they're constant. These are the ones with the low resistances. Let's have a look around here. So, this one I thought was probably the V core. 0 0.91. 0 0.715. That looks like the CPU. Okay. 0.718. On this one. It should be the same because the two are connected together. Oh, oh so it goes to 0.854 then drops to 72. So something's kind of getting control of that and then changing the voltage. It'll do it again. Wait one moment. Yeah, 0 0.85, 0 0.719. Okay. This one. Well, this one doesn't appear to have any voltage on, which is a bit surprising. Let's have a bad connection on it. Okay, this one seems to have no supply voltage. So it switches on. You can't see the fan icon, I'll tell you when it comes on. Yeah, it's come on now. Okay. It's interesting that has no voltage on it. Just make sure the meter is working properly. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we seem to have one here with no voltage supply. Wait again. That could well be what the problem is. Um, the RAM supply we thought was this one. So this has got about 1.5 on it when it uh, starts. So yeah, 1.2. Gone off. You can see the fan again now. So you see it come back on. Yeah, 1.2. So that's probably the RAM supply. The one next to it, I'm not sure if I've measured. 1.05. That looks like a sort of supply voltage for the PCH. Or something like that. That one is there basically all the time. So the ones that are coming on and off really are the core voltage down here.
Yeah, 0.895. And this one, which has no supply on it, which I'm very interested to see what that actually is. And this is one of the ones that was reading a fairly low resistance as well. Is it getting hot? No. A little bit warm. We've got the thermal camera. Let's have a look. Okay. I have two more thermal cameras coming uh, in the next couple of weeks. One is a phone which has FLIR built in. An Android phone complete. And the other one is an add-on. Uh, FLIR type add-on for an Android phone. So I'd be very interested to see which is the better between the two. If either of them are good. But in the meantime, here's our thermal camera. So it's now switched off. And I'm just looking around. Too much reflection there. Let's just lift this up a little bit. I don't see anything getting hot while it's not powered up. Let's have a look with the power on. One moment. Okay, it's now powered up. Let's have another look. There's something getting quite warm down here. If I just move my finger, we'll try and find where it actually is. It's not there. Oh, that's just a reflection again. I mean, I could cover the reflective things with a bit of tape or something, but... Something there a bit warm. That's reflective thing again. Yeah, reflective again. And I don't feel anything getting warm here either. This feels a little bit warm. Let's have a look in this area. Again, nothing really warming up. The one that wasn't running is just cold. Something here's got a little bit of temperature. But nothing hot, which isn't surprising because there's no shorts anywhere on here. I'm just running the back of my hand over it. CPU's have got a little slight bit of heat coming out of it. Yeah, but nothing hot. Okay. I've had a thought about the one that has no voltage. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so this one has no voltage in the 3.2 ohms. I think this might go to the power to the LED backlight possibly just because it's kind of in that area a little bit hard to say or does it come down under here let's uh, see if we can figure out where that one goes to okay I just had a quick look I'll show you it doesn't go to this I don't think if I just uh, get a connection on ground no, sorry. If I get a connection on this capacity, that's the end of the coil here. Yeah. And I just go across the connector to the screen. I'm seeing 3.0, and that's because this effectively is ground. That's the resistance I see to ground, yeah. But I don't think... Yeah, 3.9. I don't see... I've had a look. I don't see, like, a zero ohms to this connector anywhere. So I'm pretty sure it isn't like going up here to power the screen. 3.9. 3.9. I've tried an external monitor on this, by the way, on the HDMI. It doesn't work. Okay. But it does seem to go. There's some capacitors over here, yeah, just by this, by this CPU thing. It appears to go to there. Let's uh, take this heat sink off, and there might be some capacitors actually on the substrate here, and that might give us some idea of where it goes. Okay, I've taken the heat pipe off, which is quite easy to do. So, there's no capacitors on the substrate here, so I can't check directly if it goes to here or what this voltage is. But I suspect it does go to here because it's on these capacitors. Yeah. And they right down by this. It really does look like that's where it does go to. These capacitors, I guess, the other side is probably ground. 
we could very quickly tell that. Well, you leave it bleak anyway. The three, three point something or other. What you can get, you can see it. Yeah, go the other way around, same as I did on off the actual coil. Well, interestingly, now I've taken the uh, cover off. Now it's reading 3.9 again. It's on these capacitors. Yeah. Other side of these goes to ground. So we can say for a good certainty that as a supply to this chip, and I'm sure that needs to be present for it to run. So the thing to do now is see if I can find a board view or a schematic for this and then figure out what enables this power supply and why it's not coming on i'll double check again just to make sure i'm not chasing the red area and i didn't have a bad connection but i'm pretty confident that this doesn't have a supply once again then we'll just have it is switched on we can see that we do actually have a supply that's coming and going onto the vehicle on this phase and the one next to it they're both connected together yeah and then this one. Well, it actually came up for this. Did you see it? Literally starts again. Didn't see that. Yes, there. Saw it. Comes up at 0 0.314, which itself seems to be a low voltage. And suggests that the resistance on this is too low. And could well be a problem with this chip. Yeah, once again. And possibly the controller for this is just shutting back down again because it's detecting an overcurrent situation. That seems a possibility. Let's see if we can find a schematic or board view for this, but I have a suspicion that the, for the moment that supplies the PCH, which is part of the CPU on this, and the PCH has got a problem. We may actually be able to tell that a little bit further. If I take the heatsink off here, let's see if that die on this chip lights up, for instance, when that 0.3 of a volt comes on. I'll power it up in a moment, but what I'm thinking is that that supply comes into here maybe onto the small die and the large one's a processor not sure exactly and maybe that die as that power comes and goes gets hot and that shuts down because there's too much current the resistance is too low so let's put the power on now okay we'll get the thermal camera ready okay and we'll power it up and let's see if we can see anything happening here anything conclusive okay it's on what's the camera tell us it tells us a lot of reflection oh yeah it's not overly hot it does do so, but there again, the CPU would warm up, if you see what I mean. Yeah, there. I still have a suspicion that is what the problem is, but I'm not 100% sure at the moment how to actually prove it. Yeah, you can see it, guys. Okay, so we know a little bit about this. I guess really the way to diagnose this further would be to figure out what voltage this supply is supposed to be and inject the correct voltage into it and see if it runs. Yeah, that's uh, a bit of a plan. But we're going to have some fun with this one, guys, as we did on the last one. We're going to make this an interactive repair. So I can get on to part two tomorrow. But it gives you guys sort of you know 12 maybe up to 20 hours to actually uh, get your suggestions in so what do you think how would you like to proceed on this one get into the comments below guys let's have some fun and if uh, this interactive type repair works we'll do one every now and then so there you go guys 
we so far into this mystery? Have we found the problem? Have we not? How would you like to proceed with this in the part two, which I'll do tomorrow, the day after. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to get some suggestions in. The idea is uh, today's Monday and this video will be finished in two or three parts and it will be done by Friday. So you'll get another chance if uh, you have some suggestions you'd like to see me to try those to uh, diagnose it further. Or maybe you just think, hey Rich, you're right on this one. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing from you all in the comments below. So get typing, get thinking, and I'll see you all very soon on another Radio Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.